Stella somewhere. So let's wait for some few people. Then I start uh, writing two minutes because I have some announcements to provide. So does it really make sense to provide these announcements for uh, less than half of uh, the community? So we'll be starting in two minutes. Let others know that we are in, they, they can join. Great. Uh, welcome everyone for week five and congratulations to everyone who made it to uh, intensive training week five to week four. Uh, I hope you guys are doing really great. And uh, we, are, we are highly pleased to see the effort you're making, the contribution you're making to the community and also the work you're doing. So I hope that uh, I can go with the announcements. The first announcement is, of course, that we starting week five. You have received email from uh, trainee at penacademy.org, uh, inviting you to the week five and having so many information. So I guess some people can be having questions about that. So we are we, we have it, we are holding an information session uh, tomorrow afternoon. So we talk about uh, the contract and also the, the paid forward information, answering questions that you might be having. So but meanwhile you can be still reading carefully on the contract and also reading carefully the email when you understand the contract, so you can proceed with uh, the next steps. So unfortunately, we are not continuing together with some of the members who did make it to this stage. Um, those are Didier, uh, Victor, Wangura, uh, and also Margaret. So yeah, it, it's sad not to be with them, but you understand that this intensive training is requires you to be really highly committed to the training. That's why you guys made it so far. And congratulations to everyone. Um, we hope that they probably make it to the next batches. Uh, but for these ones, unfortunately, we are not moving with them. So we want to communicate this to you so you know what's going on because we, we don't need to hide any information uh, because you need to to learn or know what happened to your friends so i think that's all uh, of course it's sad uh, news but uh, let's see if we we have any other announcements from pen academy okay. then we start the, the standard Anyone from Ten Academy? Maybe um, 
Another thing that I also have to say, uh, you saw my message on Slack about the second interim submission, which was due on Saturday. Um, yeah, it was our mistake not to publish it on Google Class. Um, but as you may have seen, the submission it was a GitHub leak, which means that our team will be able to view your work on GitHub uh, that you worked on in the group. So there is no need to publish it uh, and ask you guys to submit. So we reformed that and also the final submission will be on Thursday. Nothing has to change. So unless we have any, any other announcement from uh, the Academy, then let's start. So as you know, every Monday we look, we reflect on how um, the week was, of course, how the group was doing. And yeah, you also touch on the some, some personal uh, life during the weekend. You, you let us know how you, you refreshed or you relaxed during the weekend, uh, in simple term, how you spend your weekend. Uh, so let's get started and yeah, we start from people, of course, voluntary. So people who are really willing to share us with us with their, their weekend um, and also the work in the group, the, how far are you and what's going on. Let's start with Martin, then uh, we continue with others. All right, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so last week has been good. Uh, we've uh, learned so many things. We've been uh, working on uh, doing the modeling. We've been working to ensure that everything runs smoothly. And we are hoping that by the end of Tuesday, at least we shall have uh, completed whatever we had desired to complete and then we can be able to begin uh, running some bit of tests and experiments and uh, yeah such things um for uh, our team i think we have lost one member that was uh didia uh, as far as i'm concerned uh, but uh, we wish him all the best wherever he is then i think uh, for me uh, how i rested on the weekend it was just a uh, uh, resting, sleeping, uh, spending time with family, uh, friends, and uh, yeah, basically that's how uh, my weekend was, and uh, I'm really grateful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. So, let's hear from the next person, just how the weekend was, and also the group. So far. And also, when when you also have to share, um, yeah, you can let us know how you're going to proceed um, with the person you missed from uh, the group. For example, Martin, I know probably that they had some tasks that were assigned. How are you guys going to cope with this? Oh yeah. Um, so what you did, we because for us we didn't have the challenge with did it because we our policy as a group is that we work on volunteering basis. So whenever somebody has is able to pick on a particular task, you pick on the task that uh, you feel suits your ability. And uh, wherever you feel you are unable to work on it, uh, we are always there to help and uh, we are able to assist each other. So for us, uh, because he was not uh, available, so he wasn't able to pick up any tasks and the tasks which are picked were done majorly by the team members who are around who are in the group. Um, maybe one blocker that we uh, currently I'm facing is I'm trying to get into the AWS server because I wanted to run some few experiments, uh, but I'm, unfortunately I'm not able to get in. Uh, I've tried reaching out to Yabibal. I, I, I think he'll, he'll assist me, uh, maybe uh, know what the issue could be. Uh, and I've tried reaching out to my fellow teammates. They are telling me they have the same issue. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, it from my side and our side as a team. 
Yeah, thank you, Martin. And I guess Yabube is also here. And I saw the message on Slack about that. Yabube, are you, uh, do you have to add something on the concern of Martin? Yeah, um, I'm just checking right now because it's there it should be. I, I'm able to log in, so this should be just so I'm just checking. So I'll get All back right. in a few minutes. Great, thanks. Yeah, that's great. So let's hear from the next person. How you did, yeah. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so to give an update, uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, so to give an update on last week, uh, we have been working on the first on the pre-processing part and we started the modeling first. Uh, I, I can't say that we are going uh, as planned, but we are trying to move fast now. We have divided the web development part in the modeling part, uh, and some of the team members are working on the modeling, and others are working on the web development part, so that we can get it done uh, as quick as possible. Uh, I think, and one thing uh, I want to ask is that we have been trying to use the AWS server for the training, but uh, we still haven't figured out to how to use the GPU. Our training is using the still using CPU. We are using TensorFlow 2.0 or above, and uh, only we are only using the CPU, and that's one of the problems that we are currently facing. Maybe I think it would be great if anyone has figured out uh, to use the GPU. It would be great to share. Thanks, uh, Yudilia. It looks like Martin has an answer or a, a support. <clears throat> yeah, the GPU is, is uh, I think last week when it was set up, it was okay. And uh, if you want to use the GPU, if you're using Windows, you can use uh, VS Code, connect it to your VS Code and you'll have an easy time running it. Uh, you can, you can, yes, you can run it from JupyterLab, but uh, if you also have the opportunity to connect it with VS Code, you'll also have a, a better experience, yeah. A tutorial was shared over there in, uh, a link was shared in a group on how to connect it with the VS Code, uh, and for yeah. connecting it with VS I'm, I'm just going to stop you, Martin, because you don't need all this uh, kind of change base code and that if you're using great, but you know that's not a good uh, answer for the question. Have you installed TensorFlow GPU? Uh, yes, I've installed TensorFlow GPU, and, and I think were you able to change from CPU like in the context to GPU? because you have to give it explicitly to, to check it. So have you tested just to try to use, because NVIDIA is installed, mm. uh, sorry, like the CUDA is installed, so you mm. you will be able easily, I mean, TensorFlow should detect it. If it doesn't, then let's just talk after this. So I will, um, we, we can probably discuss about that. And whoever is struggling, we can also go through it. But I think, you know, some of the things that I'm encouraging people is that they, it is just straightforward, like we haven't invented it. And the usual flow that every everywhere else working must work. So you, there is no shortcut that you need to do or, I don't know, long paths that you have to go. Just TensorFlow detects uh, NVIDIA GPUs and it should work, that's it. And if it doesn't work, great, let's figure it out. Because sometimes it's just going around inventing something is isn't just the simplest shortest usually must work and should work so yeah let's i will just check um like if you are changing so if you are working from a notebook basically you have to install a ipy kernel such that your kernel is detected and then basically like with that environment it must work like you know, we have okay so should work. we there is nothing that we we have to configure on the CUDA or CDNN, right? No, it's uh, okay. TensorFlow GPU will detect it. Okay. okay. Thank so you. I I will in, like I will connect now, like in, and then by the end, we'll probably just go through. So. 
uh, brick one brick how to test this just a simple test all right um also... and Matthew, why are you so i i see that it should be connected so is it are you saying that you can't ssh or are you saying that you can't run um like let's say i don't know uh notebook or something what, what is the what is the issue uh, i can't ssh okay so maybe just can you quickly just check like i mean what have you changed anything and uh, no no i haven't changed anything can you quickly just screen share and just let's see what is going on Okay, I don't know whether you're able to see the screen. Yeah, I, I can. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let me see your uh, configuration, like SSH config. Uh, in the first place, you must not use, I think if it's none, sudo then it, it shouldn't work if ssh is in sudo mode it can't it, it, it can't work it must be 700 ssh yeah so just you have to do sudo ch mode okay. zero zero and then you have to remove yeah that okay now if you can ls just to see okay so maybe you have to change in the r exactly and then after that, though, you have to change other like uh, private keys, the files to like six zero zero. What's going on with your? Uh... <clears throat> It's still six hundred. Is it owned by you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll change the permissions and then I'll... 777, seven, seven. let's make it 777. Seven, seven. And then instead of that pass, just give it the whole pass instead of the tilde. So it's just home uh, slash, I don't, know, I don't know, not like that, slash start from the root folder or yeah yeah okay and now ls just oh, it's still which one are you because i can't see uh -huh. what, can you highlight yeah okay yeah, that's that's correct uh it's just that you own okay so now can you do ch own ch own no no sudo ch own sudo No, no, like sudo first and then ch on. Mm. Then Martin, no, no, Martin. 
and then semi colon martin again colon and then martin and then uh, r the capital r yeah and then uh, yeah like add ssh the folder just give you the folder just the usual tilde is where we'll work now with ssh okay and yeah it's uh yeah now it's good now just sudo ch mode no, no, you don't need sudo now. Sage mode. 6700. Okay, then you can just do it. It's fine. And then, like, then you have to make the the other, the inside, everything in the inside, at least 600. So just sage, sage, on, sage mode again. Yep. 600 everything you can just it's fine um but, but maybe like maybe idea so what are the elements like there so what is yeah. just for now give it your public key only like okay. the, yeah so dog. yeah uh no it's the private key all we need is the private key actually Good, now SSH, just, you can just SSH now. Um, Martin, Martin. Ah, so you make it 7-7, seven, seven. like a uh, config, you just make it, uh, yeah, but the config is working. It's Martin, Martin. I mean, seven zero zero just should be config. Okay. SSH, you just have to know SSH is three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. No worries. Okay. Great. Let's continue. So, like, each team. Uh, have you asked um, uh, Everest, like if each team, just each team must present a very brief summary of what they have done by just presenting, I don't know, dash, like uh, whatever they have worked. So we're, because I joined late, I am not sure what uh, you were asking them. So I just wanted to wait for you, so we'll see if we can... Uh practice it today okay it today. So what, what i want and normally we would do the, the same thing is we would present uh, if it's in a team uh, would each team will basically if it's a small team each team will present what they have done by just basically presenting a three minutes update um quickly i know that you we haven't told you so you might not have prepared but whoever has like just basically saying instead of just only talking but also just presenting the I don't know the um, notebook and saying like you know we have been doing that we're we're, we're trying to do that um, and we have achieved that kind of a good summary but something that we see so or you can focus on one plot that you are happy with right so just share with us one plot or one element of your work um, that illustrates the kind of the, what has been done last week okay. So can we start from team one? Um, so normally the, the spokesperson should have been prepared, but now anyone can, like anyone in that team, who's in it can, can tell us. Just to add on, on what everybody said, um, <clears throat> sorry guys that this is, we did not prepare you for this, uh, but it, it's going to be happening on every Monday, right, Jababu? Uh, Yes. So every Monday, yeah, if it's a normal project, we will select a few so that the yeah. few will present what they have done and the things that they are proud of last week. Right. So something that not just only in conversation, but either it can be a slide if they have prepared a slide or a notebook if they haven't prepared a slide. Yeah, let's, let, let's start from the group one. Um, yeah, group one. Mm. 
group one with uh, I see Mehmet, Yididia, Ken. So whoever is on, on the call, uh, let us know if you have something to, 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 to just let us know your progress. You can be a notebook, you can tell us uh, this is what you have achieved so far in the work. So, I can see you did here on the call. You did here. Do you have something no. to share? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I can't see that I have something to share, but uh, we have been working on the pre mainly on the preprocessing part, and we have started the modeling. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if I got if I exactly get what you are expecting. Do you want us to show some plots or? Yeah, something that that illustrates like you know you have done a lot of stuff probably but something that will illustrate a good summary of your achievement the more we want to see the kind of achievement you know the, the reason is is like let's say if you have got a model you've progressed to modeling it you would probably show us some kind of result maybe from the model how it works if you have got some eda that is really cool flow that cleans the data then you probably will show us that so you choose because it, uh, uh, you may have worked a lot but you choose something that you think will illustrate you know something that you're proud of in actually is that clear uh, yes it's clear but uh, yeah choose if if there isn't if it's work in progress this time right so you basically choose the part that you guys spent a lot so they've definitely you by now it could be the literature review right so we have understood this so when you are asked like this it, it could be anything it's not just only that but whatever you guys spend significant time and then you achieve something i mean by now you must have done something and just i know it could be a lot but just choose one that you know that's easy for you to talk to talk in, in such an ask Hmm. Okay, to, to be honest, from my side, I've been mostly trying to work on the server side, uh, mostly the modeling part, but uh, I've been trying but, but to... But are there, like, it, it's fine that one, so are there hmm. team members who have achieved something, like who have done the literature review or who have done the, you know, the, basically the EDA, and can you guys show, like, you don't have to, you know, this is a teamwork, so it's not about particularly what you have done. Mm. But can, for example, they like, okay, you know, you can point to one person in the team saying like, I, I think you have done something, so can you show it? Like, it's it's about team right now. You have to think it's a team and just mm. whatever shows the teamwork is what we want to see or what mm. others want to see. Okay, just a minute. So meanwhile, we wait for you, did ya? Other groups can be uh, getting ready for probably to present something. So for you, you did that, it's because uh, we didn't tell you guys ahead. But this was the, from the suggestions um, from you guys. So we want to imp start implementing it. So we will be selecting a few um, on, on Friday to let them know, prepare something to present. So it doesn't mean to be like uh, without any notice. Martin, I see your hand. Maybe you have some. Yes, uh, I think I can represent on behalf of uh, my group. So let me share my screen.
Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, we do. All right, thank you. So uh, for us, we split the two tasks into pre-processing and for modeling, uh, because that is currently, because the, the, the third task was basically about uh, writing the reports, and uh, which uh, we are also working on that. Uh, but uh, last week, what you were able to achieve uh, was the pre-processing and the modeling part of it. So let me just share with the modeling. Um, just it's, it's opening. I mean, the pre-processing, uh, the first thing was uh, we tried to divide a notebook according to the tasks that were given. So, uh, for example, like the first task was to load an audio file. So we created a, a file for loading audios. Then, uh, then the, the next task was just uh, the loading of transcription. And then uh, we also created a, a particular function for loading transcriptions. And then uh, the next task was, uh, and these are just plots to show how the data is distributed and whether the data is clean, like currently, uh, the data was not so clean so uh, we did some bit of cleaning of the data uh, which is over there below then uh, there's this part of converting into channels and then there is the standardizing uh, standardizing the the like resizing just resizing it into uh, many in, in, into the standardizing is getting it to be of the same size and then also you are doing some bit of resizing so that you can be able to have uh, in terms of uh, length of the particular audio so that they can be of the same uh, dimensions. Then the augmentation that was uh, wording, the data augmentation that is uh, shifting the time signal by either to the left or to the right uh, by a certain amount uh, which you can be able to add in DVC. You can be able to add that particular in DVC and uh, uh, check the different data sets, how it brings it to you. Then also we now did some bit of feature extraction and the feature extraction that we did was just uh, getting it from a spectrogram. And uh, we did now the acoustic modeling where we are removing also some bit of uh, features and putting them. Uh, we, put it, we put all the features inside uh, uh, two CSVs, the Amharic CSV and the Swahili CSV having the different uh, components. So this is the Amharic one and this is the, uh, the Swahili. Uh, dot CSV. Then uh, we did the cleaning of the text is over here, uh, which uh, basically what we are doing is uh, for the Amharic one, there was some bit of challenge with the text because uh, the words are not uh, stringed together. So uh, somebody who knew Amharic, for this case, it was Biro who uh, cleaned for us the text. I uh, just used the particular algorithm uh, for Max a max hope used max hope algorithm to just uh, do the cleaning of the text and then uh, yeah we were able to to complete just that particular part of the pre-processing of the of the data set then uh, for the modeling for the modeling um, we we just use the for us we were using uh, this particular pipeline let me just uh, uh, the design that we are using or the pipeline that we're using for modeling uh, it's uh, uh, this was the design that we're using for modeling so the first thing was uh, putting in of a spectrogram, then the architecture, then the maps, and then the LSTM and the dense layers. So uh, that's the exact same format we followed uh, also over here uh, during the modeling and the deployment using the, uh, and also applying ML operations that is using DVC and MLflow. Uh, so the only thing that we are logging in MLflow was the WER rate at the loss and uh, the WER rate and the loss so far, we are, we are only just logging those two parameters uh, to monitor our model. So uh, we read the data from the CSVs that we generated over here, the audio processing uh, .ipynb. And then after reading from those particular CSVs, 
uh, we uh, just uh, split the data set into two and uh, transform it into like uh, the TensorFlow tensors so that you can be able to easily work with them when are doing the CNN, RNN, LSTM, and CTC. Then uh, we actually go ahead and do the CNN, RNN, LSTM, CTC. And this one is where you can actually see the pipeline design as it is shown on this other side, like where it starts with the spectrogram as the input, uh, which uh, is the same case over here. Uh, the input over here is the spectrogram. And then we go to the convolution layers, which are two of them, uh, because at this point, we had started with a 2D array. Uh, the reason we had started with a 2D array, first of all, was because uh, we wanted to minimize on computing. So we, we started with data that was uh, not uh, converted into stereo. Then uh, our second run uh, is data that is converted into uh, stereo. So that was just because of running purposes. And uh, when we have the two, when we have the the 2D, the 2D array, the two convolution. Think, um, so, Michael, I don't just stop. Um, um, so, sorry, uh, Martin, because we we don't want like a full detail just of that. We just only want a small presentation, not more than three minutes. Let me stop you there, and let's go to other teams. But thanks. I think that's really the type of presentation we want, except just we like make it like in three minutes. Okay, here are the things. Here are the things we do. But great. But this would be like on, we will have on Friday, uh, or I, I, uh, there will be either Thursday or Friday, there will be a where it's every team will have 15 minutes to present their work. So there it's relevant, at least in terms of like, you put it in a slide and then you would be able to present. But thanks for that, Martin. Um, let's continue other teams just for the sake of time. Thanks. Okay, you did yeah. hmm. Okay, uh, let me go over what we've been doing. Again, just it might give you three minutes, like roughly kind of think of it in three minutes terms. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, just to give you a basic recap of what we've been doing. So the first phase was to work on the preprocessing part. We have been separately working on the preprocessing, on the audio preprocessing. Finally, we merged what we've been doing individually on a separate small groups and merged that on in one notebook. So for the preprocessing, uh, the first task was to load the audio. We uh, separately uh, used just separate scripts to load the audio to preprocess the data as well as for the data modeling. So for the data loading, we first loaded the train data, the all, all, all audios with a specific sample data as well as durations. Uh, then we tried to analyze or to visualize the data that we have got for each for sample audio files. Uh, after that, we, the first step was to stream some of the audios because there were sil silences in the first, uh, in the beginning as well as in the end. Uh, after streaming the data, we convert the channels. All of these were, were written on a separate script to be imported into a module. Uh, then we sampled the data. We have tried to analyze only for a sample of audios. I think here we loaded about 10 audios and tried to visualize that those audios by extracting some important features as well as other preprocessing. Uh, we also visualized the durations for each or for that audio uh, by using a histogram. We also resized the audio and we also we did all, the, all of the necessary preprocessing parts. And after that, we tried to uh, basically extract the features. We used the spectrogram as well as the MFC features to extract all the relevant features from our audio. Uh, after extracting, we tried to visualize the, uh, the we, we tried to plot for the spectrogram as well as the MFCC and we tried to analyze the features that are important for our audio. Uh, after the preprocessing part, what we've been working was on the modeling part. For the modeling part, uh, for, so for the modeling part, uh, after the data has been processed, pre-processed as well as cleaned, uh, we tried to build a simple model first using convolutional uh, layer and by, by also adding some other layers to make our uh, deep learning model more strong and to give it an accurate result. Uh, we still haven't been able to predict, to make a prediction as well as finish all our preprocessing and data modeling. I think we are iterating again and again to get a better result. Okay, 
Great. I think let's stop there. Um, thanks. Group. So Michael uh, Ma Martin is group three. Iride is group one. So anyone from group two, group four, and group five. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. That is going. Okay. Uh, let me present some, some, something we did. Uh, we are from group two. Actually, what I am going to present is not uh, my individual work. It is the work we did in group. Uh, so, <coughs> is my screen is visible? Yeah, it's coming. Okay. First, we did the pre-processing task. Uh, in doing this task, we have uh, uh, worked on, uh, we all are working on pre-processing and uh, we have selected the good, uh, the good one from the <coughs> codes and uh, we have pushed it to the main. So uh, as usual, as, uh, as the rest of the group said, we have imported uh, every modules which used to do pre-processing and uh, we have loaded the data and we can ch we have changed it to mono channel and we have resized it also and uh, some data vi visualization is done by using some plot of audio such as uh, librosa display wave show uh, using that one and uh, we have uh, we have changed our uh, uh, we have augmented our data by using uh, time shifting method uh, and uh, we have add, added some noise to the audio and they, we have used, used a sampling rate of five factor using time shifting and uh, using pitch shift also we, we did that one and uh, uh, we have extracted some features by <clears throat> from these audios which we'll use uh, for the modeling and uh, we have uh, also uh, illustrated our our the, our data by using male frequency capstral coefficient and uh, the other one and uh, finally we have uh, after doing all these pre-processing tasks we have extracted the train corpus and uh, the test corpus the same process is uh, the, the uh, have taken uh, place on the rest on the train corpus also and uh, <clears throat> Uh, the other thing we did is uh, uh, the metadata generation. Uh, having that data, we have uh, mapped some of the characters that could be spoken in the, in the language, and uh, we have uh, labeled the dictionary. That means the lexicon, the transcription of uh, for train data and the test data. And finally, uh, we have generated the metadata uh, from this transcription and. Uh, we have recorded some of the duration of each uh, data and uh, we have uh, get some of data frame uh, with a json file and and uh, <clears throat> finally we have saved both the uh, train data and the test data uh, after uh, generating this metadata and uh, on uh, on modeling one of our members stella made some uh, she she made some branch and uh, we are all working on it maybe if she's present it is good but uh, what she did is just having that uh, metadata generated information she have uh, <clears throat> she have given uh, supported characters of uh, amharic uh, here and uh, some of the some of the uh, the the characters which are not inside of this uh, also added because we get from the corpus some of the characters which are not there in this and uh, she generated input data and uh, also uh, she did some uh, modeling tasks by defining some model uh, recurrent neural network and uh, uh, she have created the training uh, by using this model and finally we have got some idea, but the problem is uh, now we are uh, suffering with G GPU issues. Uh, uh, still, uh, me and the others also working on it, but uh, 
the problem is the GPU issue. From my side also, if you see, uh, during the training, the GPU issue is uh, reflected. Uh, and if, <clears throat> I, I need to ask you even how we how we fix the, gra the graph execution error on this GPU. Oh, and uh, we haven't, uh, some of our, some of us are, we haven't accessed the, uh, yep. the AWS you have given us. So yep. thank you, thank you. I have taken many time. No, no, it's- If, okay. I, if I will have anything to add, yeah. so here is the sound, maybe. I think it's, it's good just to think, let's keep the, like, so that we can cover other groups we will be connected i think as you know as martin said probably some of you you have already connected one way or another by searching a different method that's great but i will just after the review i will also just present uh, how to connect how to access the gpus in your machine so okay great thanks abel was that your hand raised yeah he raised maybe if he have uh, any ah, is, idea that, is that the same group that he's the same group okay. one minute maybe. so uh, no i just want to cover other groups so do we have other groups so this is group two right which group I is right this? this group two group two group two okay so we have covered group one group two group three so anyone from group four and group five so if you can um stop sharing that that would be great I mean, you have to, like the people that are not attending, they have to ask themselves what, you know, what would be, what is, is that, is that a sign that people are dropping off or is that the sign that there are more power cuts, more internet issues? We'll be a bit more strict as we go on um, because most of the time, as you might know, all we care is that it's, it's a win-win like the training is a win-win it's a win for you by working hard we, we 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 know you and we provide some of the things we learned by talking to industry and then we also just basically investing as you could see in many ways like in terms of the resources and we want you to be job ready like that means we want you to be hired by a global company so that you make your career better and also you'll be able to uh, pay back so that we continue as, as a non-profit organization to train others. So, and if people are missing a lot, I mean, I think, you know, acceptable things are fine, but if people are missing a lot, it basically means it's just the indication that we can't trust like the kind of people who would not make it for three months, uh, dedicating their time, especially just such a stand up. So, you know just consider it like you know why why is it the case that some people really are missing um in these hours because you could really check it i mean you could really plan it to be at least at this hour available so i'm sure you know the ones that you are here great and we are only talking to you and that's just of course i'm talking about the people who are unable to attend unable to attend today and just when you talk to them you know if they are friends or if you have like calls just let them know it, it's not a good sign. I think over time, it doesn't tell us a good sign or a good confidence um, if people are not attending. And those of you who are attending, you know, really keep up, keep, keep doing it. it. It gives us confidence when we are talking to other companies to say like, you know, this person is reliable and they will do anything to ensure that the work quality is achieved. And even if they feel that it's redundant, the meeting, they would, they, they would say it, but they would not just miss out you know the calls so it's a, it's a very you know it's a very communication um being on a stand up being in some of the things it's a communication um for us that you are reliable and ready um so yeah so group four so we will not go um, without thank you. okay go on daisy thanks thank you yeah i had not realized that my team members are not on the call um, Gezahin was supposed to give an update since I had stepped out to get my eyes checked. Um, I'm not able to share my screen.
vaccine. So is it okay if I just give, uh, yeah. give an update right. verbally and then we can do that um, yeah. later? Good. Um, okay, so we were able to go through task one. It was a bit hazy because um, initially we started out with everyone um, doing the entirety of task one. Um, um, so that made um, last week really hard for us. Um, but with the guidance of Geza, Heen, and Jonas, who are our technical leads, we were able to compile um, all of task one. Um, that's the pre-processing, which entails the sampling, the standardizing of the, the data and generating the JSON. Um, uh, we also had a call last week to make sure that everyone was able to access the instance. Um, and as of that time, everything was working well. Um, and uh, so for this week, we want to progress into the modeling. We are a little behind track, um, but I'm hoping we are able to still proceed with um, the task according to plan. Um, uh, from the mistake in task one, at least we're able to divide our work into issues. Uh, we had a call with Martin's team just to see what it is they're doing differently, and we were able to learn one or two things to set the task so that maybe if you're more skilled um, into something, then you're able to like leverage your strength in that. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Stacy. Uh, group five. Is that is that group four or group five? Group four. Okay. Group five. Pinium. Okay. Good morning, Yambewal and everyone. Okay. So to give an update on my team's progress, um, we have managed to completely um, finish. Uh, Task one, uh, Mickey is sharing his screen to show us some of the things we've, uh, we've done in task one. Uh, that means the pre-processing part. Yeah, so <clears throat> basically uh, the way we handle this task is uh, by dividing it among ourselves. Uh, we each took one of the subtasks that means uh, changing it from mono to stereo uh, is one subtask. The other one is uh, standardizing the sampling rates. Uh, and uh, of course, there is also the links uh, uh, matching uh, subtask that is resizing audio samples. Uh, each of us just developed uh, a general uh, method that's stored inside a script and that that's that can be loaded into the notebook and used to pre-process uh, samples uh, so basically we've managed to complete this uh, pre-processing stage uh, successfully we, uh, current uh, in the and then after that we've divided the tasks task three and task two uh, among us, ourselves again and uh, some of us were working on uh, developing uh, the deployment uh, system, that means uh, the, uh, way, the web applications as well as uh, model deployment uh, uh, codes, including the Docker and others. And some of us were developing the uh, model itself. Uh, we are, the task three team uh, are finished with their uh, assignment, but uh, uh, the task two, where we're still struggling to make some of uh, the code work. Uh, there are some rising errors that are inhibiting us from completing it. But by the time we complete that, we'll be able to uh, give the model to the task the task three team, and they will be able to deploy it uh, on the web. <clears throat> so basically, that's where we are standing right now. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you, Th thank you, Binyam. Um, okay. Yeah. Was there a hand? So now we finished all all groups. Um, so if you have any question or if you want to update in the next five minutes, that's also possible. That is it. Okay, thank you. Basically, my question is not related to the project. Just related to the AWS success. 
uh, <coughs> it says uh, it, it reflects some error when I try to access that one. Okay, so maybe, maybe why, why I need this. Why don't we? Why don't you present just and let's talk okay. quickly? Okay, okay. Could I present it now? Yeah. Okay. Let me. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it, it uh, <clears throat> responds in this manner. So Hello, the, is it can visible? Expand, can I expand because the okay, okay. other windows yeah. are covering? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so can we see your, like, where you put your config file? Okay. Here it is. Yeah, just uh, it's not so it's not config it it's not conf it's called config rename it oh, okay it's a computer so if you make one single mistake of course it doesn't know yeah. oh, yeah. okay. is it config yeah. in this way exactly okay. and then you can open it um i mean maybe it's running it's working now already but i i need to see it what's wow. inside Inside the config, yeah, it's it's working. Okay, okay, thank, thank. So now it is working. Yeah, we are connected. Uh, okay. So is it like I think a lot of the things you know this, this is what I have noticed over and over and over. You can now unshare it. It's you, you know, I was commenting on how no team were able to submit the format I requested correctly. There can be million reasons, but that's what I'm I'm saying. A tiny detail, it's attention to detail. That if you just make that kind of simple mistake as now, for example, then you really just spend hours and days. If in a company it could be months without connecting, right? If someone doesn't just see it like this. And you really have to ask some most of the times, like in this to really make it. As a good programmer, you, you may be a good programmer, but as a good all around it, at least, you know, good programmer, but all around it in other things, you have to pay into these details, just tiny details that if someone asks X, Y, Z, they probably have a reason and you really have to ensure that you understand. If you don't understand it, you have to ask like, okay, is this the way that you want it? Because otherwise one error, you know it, it's like, you don't know where, where to even start. Maybe you don't understand even the error message. Maybe this, maybe the error message is cryptic. So I really, you know, it's just my advice for you. Uh, it's not just only for now, but for the whole time in, in your career, pay attention just to details because we are working on these sophisticated things um, and you're getting even more sophisticated and more complex. A tiny mistake like that would just really a rename or a name or a folder mismatch. Of course, we want, why do we want deep learning? We want it to be fault tolerant. We want it to be human error tolerant. Of course, a system that's designed to tolerate this should, you know, should basically give you a good error. Like it should be intelligent enough to learn, you know, the future OS will be, it will learn what you really actually doing by repeatedly when you do it and tells you like, look like you, you have your name, your the SSH in principle should be .config you know, config file, but you have com. But that's, we're not in that era. Maybe in the next 20 years, we might be. But until then, you have to be just super careful, super uh, detailed, especially like in computing and errors. Like you, ca you can't just make one mistake because that's exactly the same as making a big mistake. It's just, it doesn't work. So hopefully, by seeing other people how we correct the reason why i want people to present their screen and, and do it live you know it's just it's a good lesson for everyone um what could go wrong you know you have seen so many good things could go wrong anyways great okay so let me present uh, anyone else just one more like um question any Any question before I go? Uh, Rafaya, sorry. 
Yeah, hi everyone. Um, morning and um, happy first week in week five. And just, uh, it's not like a technical question here. I'm just trying to, um, like, you know, I want to say congratulations for everyone here. Um, I mean, it's really like um, amazing. This is step and um, to, to continue in this training and um, the idea of learning. And to just add on your last point, because uh, it's, it's really hard for us sometimes to think like a computer and to just have this separation between our human mind and like thinking as a machine and to realize that it's really very, very small mistakes like can just make us like uh, we, uh, we can lose everything. And yeah, I'm, I'm really training my mind to do so, to just at some time to think just like the machine and to at some time to have to, to, to return to the normal situation. Um, and I don't know if I can just ask about the payment process here. It's just like I have to um, email. I think let, let, let's delay that one. I think um, definitely. Everest will reach out. So, mm -hmm. like, I let's see. just um, okay. yeah, let's postpone that. Amal. Okay. And uh, just one last thing for the AWS. Also, I have this problem. Like, um, I just posted in um, in the post, uh, like in the comments of your post. And I don't know if you could, could see it or not. Okay. But... No, I haven't seen it, but we, we would check. But the, the part is that now have some of you, like, in, in your team, probably there is yeah, yeah. Windows as well as yeah, yeah, if you guys just study. check. Otherwise, okay. just invite me um, mm -hmm. if in your group, like if, if there is a group and mm -hmm. some are struggling, just invite me in a gym it and we can okay. do exactly the same. Everyone will just present. I think last time we did that with Martin and the team and yeah, it was yeah. hopefully helpful. And the same we can do for every team. But it's going to be very hard for me to do it one by one. Unless, yeah, like, you know, um, so I would say just organize it within your team. And if there are people who are still not accessing, just call me um, or invite me and then just let's have a gym meet and we'll sort, we'll sort it out. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Good. Amal. Um, hi, everybody. Hi. Um, so this is just a reminder um, about uh, adding us to group three of IWS, me yeah. and Margaret. Yeah, I think uh, you forgot. Um, I, I can't hear you well, but in terms of like, if you haven't, yeah, I remember like your team was telling me that the, you were unable to provide because you were sick. Uh, hope, I mean, if I'm not mistaken. And in that case, yeah, you can just send me your public key just in uh, I'm Slack. Sure so, sorry, I think your, your voice is quite not audible yeah. for me. I'm I sent it via the Google Classroom. I know Google Class. So can you say okay? So it's easier for me okay. if you send it if you just copy and send me uh, copy paste it in the Slack. Just that's easier, quicker. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna present like just how. So while I was just checking for GPU connection, so there was, of course, one thing it's, it was telling me the error. So I'm just going to share. Um, so what I wanted was basically to run a test, right? So I have this function that is um, basically just to kind of check if there is GPU. And it's basically this. If you, I think I, the good thing is that if you are using uh, TensorFlow, uh, you know, two or uh, version two or up, then you just have to install to install it, and it has in, internally GPU and CPU uh, together. So in the few in the past, uh, TensorFlow one was actually that you have to install TensorFlow GPU separately, but this one just integrates. So basically, it will test. It's just a simple, and if you look at the utils. Uh, If 
two tails um it's basically just simple right we import tensorflow and then we do just simple so in principle we want to check the version if it's using uh, gpu or not but when i was testing it of course i understood i'm just going to go to the errors so it was telling me just if you are just simple as also if you go to tensorflow and see you can actually check like that whether you are it's using ten, uh, gpu or not if it's not it tells you what to do right so of course like that's what you have to install the in conda because we are in conda environment not only uh, cuda but the toolkits and the nn um, that tensorflow requires so i just basically had to install that so if you have i'm, I'm going to install so i'm going to have at least one um in each of you there will be one um environment conda environment that's called tfgpu where you can use you use it to build and i will that basically just means like you have to install that one so i i manage it's basically you know if you do simply that um conda install uh the toolkit and the cdnn basically you will install and then when i'm testing it again i also realized of course it detects the gpu after that right uh it's built with cuda yeah that's true um and the number of gpus is one right but then it was also it would complain i think everything is working but it was complaining that blast was not installed so i installed with blast this is basically blast lab pack things like that are libraries if you haven't if you don't know you don't have to know that much but these are like the base libraries that you know for all metrics and other operations basically think of it as the super fast library for metrics and other uh, operations like uh, or algebraic operations basically okay so now if i do again after after that it should basically tell me still i have the blast operations i mean i think it it, it executed it's not um um mm -mm. so the simple thing it's still of course it's connected but i need to sort out what this error is fail to create qlab sandal um but let me just check The simple answer, like to you, uh, for Yididia and others who are unable, now you will be able to basically TensorFlow sees GPU, uh, and that's basically its name is that, and the device type is GPU. So you will be able to to use it. So my test is not working, but I will just make it work. But this way, I think your code shall run. Um, and another demonstration, I can move this uh, yeah, tutorials, TensorFlow tutorials that I just downloaded. Um, um,
So is there a question until then? I don't see any hands. So if you have, yeah, Tadessa, go on. Okay, sorry for interrupting, Doctor. No, no, it's okay. I mean, uh, I, I, sorry, I, I don't mind interruption at all. I actually <laughs> encourage oh. interruption, so don't be sorry for that. But oh, if okay. I also interrupting you, don't feel bad. Don't take it personal. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yesterday, I'm doing on the modeling, <clears throat> and uh, I, I got the same error that you have got now. Maybe yeah. it resembles each other, yeah? The, the one you have got on the, <clears throat> yeah. on the command, which is, uh, it, it, it says a graph execution error. I'm really happy if uh, I solve this one. Okay, so you have solved it or you want it to be solved? No, no, I want to solve. Uh, I, I got the same, this one, yeah. Okay. The same error. I don't know why I'm I going to solve this. Okay. We have another hand or? Is there a way to import yeah, Martin, the, Martin has the just GPU? Okay, okay. One. dot nv it's taking so time definitely Um, it seems uh, now that's still the same. Yeah, yeah, but I, I will basically, I have to see which version of the uh, last we are using. And and it seems related to yeah the NVIDIA cache. So because I installed NVIDIA from Amazon, I have to check which version that they are using. And then it seems yeah like a mismatch with regard to that. So um and i will fix for all of them and i will i will let you guys know yeah but sorry for the uh interruption but uh, yeah this is great i hope the next the next uh session was a tutorial so we okay some great yeah, let's stop it exactly um, and then i will announce and we can if there needs to be we can basically get an um uh in a call in a gmeet Great. Yeah. Then you stop the recording. So yeah. I guess the tutorial is on the course. The tutorial or? is just running, right? So 